Okay, our goal on this is to find the average rate of change when we're given a function on a given interval. Now this interval is from a, uh, 4 to a. So remember, these are both x values. <laughs> that a is not a y value. All right, so both of those are x values in this interval. When we're thinking about average rate of change, average rate of change is the equivalent to thinking about the slope formula. All right, I always think of average rate of change as just meaning the slope. And the slope formula, we can use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is if we have two ordered pairs. Well, we have two x values and we have a function, so let's put these together and try to get two ordered pairs. So in our case, that's going to be f of 4 can be substituted in, replacing each one of the x's. So 4 squared minus 2, that's 7 times 16 minus 2. And 7 times 16 works out to be 112 minus 2. So that'll work out to be 110. So that corresponds with the ordered pair 4, comma, 110. Now we're going to do something very similar with the a, but it feels a little bit different when you plug a in. So f of a is going to be 7 times a squared, replace the x with an a, minus 2. Now it feels weird, but we input an a, and our output was 7a squared minus 2. I'm going to try to treat that like a y value. So here we have x1, y1, x2, y2. Filling into that average rate of change formula, or the slope formula, let's take a look at what this is going to give us. We have 7a squared minus 2, y value, minus 110, y value from the other ordered pair, divided by a minus 4. I think we can do a little bit of simplifying down along the way here. Let's give it a shot. So we have like terms in the numerator. We can say 7a squared minus 112 over a minus 4. All right, so far so good, but I think we can reduce down even a little bit further. So the next thing I'm going to do is I think we have 7 as a greatest common factor in our numerator. So let's give that a shot trying to factor out a 7 from our numerator. That would leave us with a squared and then 112 divided by 7 works out to be 16. So that was just factoring out a greatest common factor. But now we're at the point that I think we can factor a little bit further. I notice that we have a squared minus 16. Well, that works out to be a difference of squares. All right, difference because it's subtraction in the middle and a is a perfect square, so it'll split up. 16 is a perfect square. We just have to make sure one's positive and one's negative. But after we've done all that factoring, it actually works out pretty nicely that we have a common factor between the numerator and denominator. So a minus 4 and a minus 4 can simplify down, and our final solution can be 7 times a plus 4. And that is that represents our average rate of change for this function on the interval from 4 to A. Um, good luck as you're working through these. It requires a little bit of algebra skills and simplifying down, but you can do it.